Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to walk you through how I got the Arnold Denoiser Noise to work um, on rendering my image sequence. Um, now I want to just uh, say a bit of a disclaimer here, this is how I got it to work. Um, I read just about all the documentation and I went through every tutorial that I could find on this and I still, uh, still couldn't get it to work. So eventually I figured it out uh, on my own. Um, and so this is how I eventually got the denoiser to work. Now I do want to point out that you can denoise using imagers. Uh, if you go to the Arnold renderer tab and you add uh, an imager here, a denoising imager like a noise uh, OIDN or optics, um, you can denoise your uh, image sequence doing that. However, um, all of those denoisers are a frame by frame denoiser. They don't, uh, meaning they, they only denoise one frame at a time and uh, it's going to denoise each frame slightly differently from the other uh, frames. So uh, you will generally get like a flickering happening in your animation if uh, if you use an imager to denoise your image sequence. Uh, whereas the Arnold denoiser found under Arnold uh, Utilities Noise, this is, if we open this up, um, we'll talk about these settings here a bit later but this has something called temporal uh, stability frames. So this will look two frames ahead or two frames back um, or however many amount of frames you specify. And it will uh, sort of consider the, um, the other frames in the sequence uh, while it's denoising it. So you get a lot less jitter, uh, color jitter and light jittering happening um, as your image sequence plays if you use the Arnold denoiser. Now, um, most of the settings I'm using just follows what the documentation says to use. Um, there's a few things I did differently that, I, that isn't in the documentation. So um, to start, we're gonna make sure that our image format is set to EXR. Um, compression is set to zip. Um, I did switch back and forth between none and zip quite a bit uh, to, to sort of troubleshoot, uh, but I think zip works fine. Um, we want to make sure that we have merge AOVs turned on and we want to make sure that we have preserve layer name turned on. Um, this is in a documentation important uh, sort of things to have checked. Um, it is important to give your image sequence a name that you know it's the denoised version of your in image sequence. Um, and uh, when it denoises it, it will add a denoised sort of uh, name to that as well. In the Arnold renderer, um, you, it's up to you to kind of find the right balance of noisiness uh, in your images. Um, I ended up just using the default settings um, and I did get some noise and we'll do a comparison as well. Um, but I think I was okay with just the default settings and, um, and denoising that way. Um, this was about an eight minute render at uh, 1080p. Um, so if that gives you an idea of, of sort of the amount of noise uh, and how long your renders will take. Uh, of course, it's going to be different depending on your computer, but that's about how long it took me. Now, I do want to point out that um, if you go to motion blur, the denoise function does not like motion blur. Uh, even if you have this instantaneous shutter turned on, which uh, is supposed to keep the motion blur out of your AOVs, um, the denoiser just won't work properly. It will render, um, but the uh, it just won't output an image that's good. Um, it'll be all blurry and you can barely even tell what your image is. So I do have a workaround for this uh, using, using a motion vector layer. Um, and I will have a follow-up video on how to get that to work as well. Now, um, next system, you want to make sure that you're rendering in CPU. Uh, unfortunately, this does not work with a GPU render. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using CPU. And then in AOVs, uh, I want to make sure that I have output denoising AOVs turned on. Um, we need a, uh, according to the documentation, you need a, um, you need a normal So I'm going to do a normal 
um, a depth and uh, just for good um, just for you know to make sure that this works I'm gonna use the denoise albedo I'm not sure if this is necessary um, this is one of the things that I again added and I troubleshooted to see if I could get it to work with this um, in the end I ended up leaving it in there but I'm again I'm not sure if that's completely necessary um, and this is what the documentation says that you need now uh, the thing that I had to add to actually get this to work is an RGBA um, AOV so I'm going to add that and I had to um, add a um, I had to add a new output driver and set that to variance. Now this is the one thing that I had to do to finally get um, this to work and get this to output through the denoiser. Um, so again, this is not anywhere in the documentation. This is uh, just something that I kind of figured out. The way I figured this out is I, I read somewhere that um, to denoise other AOVs, you, you need to do this. You need to uh, create a, uh, an, an, a, a, an additional variance filter for those AOVs if you want to denoise them. So once I added that, it just worked for me. Um, otherwise, it just wouldn't work. Now, the other thing I want to point out here really quickly is if you go to the Arnold tab and you go to your uh, filter, uh, usually I prefer, if I'm rendering an image sequence, usually I prefer to set this to Gaussian. Um, that just turns out a better render sequence generally, uh, in my experience. Um, if I'm rendering a still, I will set it to box because that will generally give you a bit of a more crisp still image, whereas Gaussian blurs uh, your images your, a little bit. And, and that's good in the case of an animation or an image sequence. But if you're doing a still, you generally want box. Now, mine is set to box just because that's something that I forgot to change. So uh, it's up to you. Um, but generally, if you're rendering an image sequence, you want to leave this set to uh, Gaussian. All right, and that's it. So we have our um, AOVs here. You want your normal, your RGBA, your Z, which is your depth, and a denoise albedo. Again, I'm not sure if that one's necessary. The one that is necessary are these, uh, among these two, is the RGBA with a variance, uh, additional variance filter set to that. <clears throat> now, once that renders your entire render sequence renders out there, um, you're going to go to the Arnold um, denoiser, noise. And uh, in this case, if you have your entire uh, image sequence, uh, you can set this to complete sequence. You're going to choose your the first image. So in my case, it's this house noise uh, raw. Select that. Um, and then uh, your temporal stability frames. Again, this is um, the denoiser's ability to look forward at other frames. So you, you generally get less uh, flickering happening whenever you're denoising. Um, your variance, this by default is set to 0.5. I upped it to 0.7. Um, this is the strength of your denoiser uh, and your a pixel search radius. Um, they say the higher this is, the better. Um, and I think even they recommended in the documentation 18 for the best quality. However, whenever I did 18, I was getting about, uh, it was taking about 20 minutes each frame to denoise um, each frame. So it was actually taking longer to denoise uh, my image sequence than it was to render my image sequence. Um, so at 12, I believe it was going at about five to six minutes per frame. So it was taking about just as long. Um, so just do some tests. And before you render the, your whole image sequence, just do some tests on a single frame and see, uh, see what you like best. And then your pixel patch radius, this is um, the softness of the denoiser. So you can increase that if you want it to be a bit softer. 
and then you click denoise and fingers crossed if everything has worked you will um you will open up your image in after effects and you'll see a denoised image um, now you can also load them up in your render view here just by going to file open and you can select your uh, raw uh, image and your denoised image and you can compare the two now here is my denoised image you can see that there's still a bit of noise but uh, especially if we look at the leaves back here uh, a lot of the noise has cleared away <clears throat> so um, overall um, this took about as long to denoise as it did to render, but I believe in the end, uh, we got some nice, clean, smooth results. Um, another disclaimer that this is not a fast process. This is not like the optics or OIDN that denoises your image in a matter of seconds. Um, you do need to kind of use your best judgment and find the right balance of samples to use and the right balance of uh, denoising settings to use to kind of make it worth your while. Um, I can see that in some cases it might be more beneficial just to increase your samples um, and get a longer render time rather than dealing with the added frames and denoising the added frames. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to um, set up a utility pass so you can render out things like motion blur and crypto mats um, without messing up your um, denoised, uh, your image meant to be denoised.